In this demonstration, we'll pick up where we left off with our basic structural analysis, but this time I would like to introduce you to some post-processing tools and some settings that you have available to you in, in terms of viewing output plots. On my baseline static analysis, I have several plots available to, to view. Let's take a look at my von Mises stress plot. One command that's very useful is to edit the definition for a plot, and this can be done in two ways. The first is to right click on the plot in the feature manager tree and choose edit definition. The second way is to double click on that plot. This will bring up the property manager to edit the definition. In the edit definition dialog you can change the quantity that is being displayed. So for a stress plot I can choose between von Mises, the principal stresses, the XYZ component stresses and so on. Next you can change the units that are being displayed. Advanced options allow you to specify whether or not to show the plot as a tensor plot and node versus element values. Most of the time you'll need to leave this at nodal values. We also have an option to display the deformed shape of the model. By default it shows up in true scale. However, you may want to set this to automatic and by doing so the plot will now uh, exaggerate the deformed shape due to the load that was applied. Keep in mind this is an exaggeration. In fact, the legend in the upper left corner of the plot shows a deformation scale of 304, which means that the, the deformation has been exaggerated 304 times just to give a visual representation of what the deformation would look like. The actual values of the stresses and displacements are not affected by this deformation scale. That's the edit definition command. Another option that you have in modifying your plot displays is to right click and choose chart options. The chart options dialog lets you apply settings to show the minimum and maximum annotations on the model. This is useful if the, uh, the minimum or maximum stress location may be difficult to find. This will put a flag on the screen. We have options that will toggle the plot details and plot legend. Next we have controls over the scaling of the legend itself. By default the automatic scaling shows the minimum all the way to the maximum values. However there may be times when you want to change those values and override them. We also have controls over the position of the plot legend as well as the number format. Floating scientific. For large numbers you can use a comma separator and finally there are color options that let you specify the color of the, the contour grid itself. One nice setting when you're working with parts that may have exceeded their yield strength is you can enable this setting to specify colors above yield. This will give a good visual representation of the areas that are above yield by turning them to a gray maybe a darker color. And that's the chart options settings. One third group of settings is what we call plot settings. Right click again on the plot and choose settings. This is a simpler dialog but it's very useful. Under fringe options this controls the style of shading. What you're seeing on screen now is what we call continuous shading. However you may like the discrete shading even better because it provides more discrete boundaries as to the gradation of the, the color legend. Under the boundary options the default behavior is just to plot the model boundary that is the model outline. However, some folks like to see their mesh superimposed on their plots. So edit definition, chart options, and settings are three very useful tools for modifying the display of your plots in SOLIDWORKS simulation.